If you recently experienced a setback, today's show is for you. We're talking about resilience, that exceptional quality that allows some people to bounce back from setbacks and difficulties stronger than ever. So here we go. Welcome to the Performance Factor Show. I'm Christine Peachman, and today we're talking about resilience. Joining me is Kent Osborne, a masterful leadership coach and someone who I find has uncommonly insightful perspectives. Welcome, Kent. Hi, Christine. So I want to talk about resilience because we've all had setbacks, whether you've lost your job, missed out on a big promotion, failed to win a client, or even just messed up in a big presentation at work. I think our resilience in the face of setbacks is important for performance and ultimately for peace of mind. So today we want to have a thoughtful conversation about resilience and see if we can uncover some ways to strengthen this quality so that we can summon it when we need it most. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. And so please go to the comments section and add your voice to this discussion. So Kent, how do you approach the topic of resilience? Well, I think uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to make a distinction between uh, resilience and persistence. Hmm. I think uh, it's a very important distinction because, uh, you know, both are necessary qualities for leadership. Um, but in our culture, in our world right now, uh, persistence is favored. I mean, the idea is that, you know, you need to be persistent. It's important to be persistent if you you have to get through your problems and challenges and keep on keeping on and make it happen. Whereas resilience, uh, the word itself, I believe, comes from a Latin uh, resiliare, which means uh, to rebound or to go back to an original state. Hmm. Uh, and it's going back to an original state uh, after something uh, extremely, uh, almost disastrous has happened. So, right. for example, uh, you know, the people in London uh, would be absolutely persistent uh, in terms of the way that they delivered the 2012 Olympics, there'd be lots of challenges and difficulties and problems they'd have to overcome. But the people in New Orleans mm -hmm. were resilient in terms of the way they over overcame the and bounced back from the uh, disaster that uh, happened with Katrina uh, yeah. years ago. So right off the bat, you have to make a distinction between the two. Yeah, and I think, to your point, we don't allow a lot of space in our organizations for acknowledging setbacks or, or acknowledging situations where resilience is actually called for. I think, you're, you know, to your point, we really do want to just plow ahead, you know, find something's happened, just pick yourself up, dust yourself off and, you know, keep going. So, oh, you can, yes, you can compare it to, um, you know, if you think about the four seasons, uh, you know, spring, uh, summer, fall and winter, uh, you know, in our personal lives and in our, in our corporate lives, uh, you know, uh, spring to fall, spring to harvest is acceptable. And any of the difficulties that are in terms of planting or growing or harvesting, hmm. that's all quite cool. But winter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're not allowed to go there. We see that as a personal failure if, uh, you know, if we're in a situation where, you know, uh, we're facing a difficulty that in, in ancient times would be called, uh, you know, a dark night of the soul yeah. or uh, you know, a time at where, you know, we seem to have lost our sense of purpose. Uh, you know, we're, we're wondering if we have our, our ladder placed up against the right wall. You know, we're climbing this ladder and we're working hard to get up there, but, you know, we're not so sure that it's the right wall anymore. So those times are not seen as uh, acceptable. They're seen as being, um, uh, you know, things that we need to avoid. There's, they're seen as being a sign of weakness. Well, and, and I think as a result of that, we don't really have good tools, for developing resilience because we're almost not even allowed to talk about it. We don't talk about the setbacks. So, so yeah. when you are going through something, you don't necessarily have great tools to, to help you spring back, as you say, to that, to that original state. Well, it's interesting when you use the word tools because I think in modern times what we'd look for is a prescription. Yes. We want some kind of a, you know, symbolic drug, you know, the three steps or the two 
two whatevers. But, you know, it's interesting. In ancient times, uh, their tools were often stories. And, uh, you know, when you think, when you mention resistance, I mean, my, what comes to mind for me is a story. It's, it's actually a story from King Arthur, uh, the legends of King Arthur in medieval okay. times. If you don't mind, I'll share a bit of it with you because I think it's, it's uh, relevant to what we're talking about. Yeah, okay. So, um, anyway, this particular uh, aspect of the story begins after Arthur is crowned king. Uh, he's drawn the sword of destiny, uh, the sword from the stone. Uh, and uh, this sword makes him a ruler of the realm. Shortly after he's crowned king, uh, he knights a young man, and uh, the young man, uh, whose name is Guilford, wants to show Arthur that he's worthy of knighthood, and so off Guilford goes to bring in the rogue knight to justice. While the rogue knight ends up killing Guilford, uh, Arthur's uh, really you know, angry about this and goes off to bring the rogue knight back to justice himself. And Arthur and this rogue knight have this one-to-one -one battle, blood everywhere, and the rogue knight's about to kill Arthur when uh, Merlin uh, steps in and casts a spell on the rogue knight and uh, spirits Arthur away. And uh, the interesting thing about the battle is that it was so, so difficult, uh, so furious, that Arthur's sword, the sword of destiny, the sword that made him king, the sword that he used to, you know, establish his purpose, establish his role as ruler of the realm, that sword was completely broken and shattered. And uh, so after Merlin spirits Arthur away, uh, when Arthur comes to and he can speak, Arthur, the first thing he says to Merlin is, I have no sword. Can you find me a sword, Merlin? Hmm. And Merlin says, uh, no, I, I can't, I can't uh, get you a sword, but I can tell you uh, how you could get it. And so, you know, the story continues, and they end up in a mountain lake, uh, and there they meet the lady of the lake, and Arthur says to her the same thing, you know, I have no sword. And the lady says, row yourself to the center of the lake. Row yourself to the center of the lake, and there you'll find the sword that you seek. And so Arthur does row himself to the center of the lake. Uh, a hand, when he gets to the center, a hand and arm come up, and they this hand and arm have a sword and a scabbard. The scabbard is the is the sheath that holds the sword. Uh, Arthur takes them, comes back to the shoreline. Uh, the lady's gone. Merlin's there. And Merlin says, what do you like better, Arthur, the sword or the scabbard? Arthur says, I like the sword better. And uh, Merlin says, you are the more unwise because the scabbard is worth 10 of the sword. So again, you, know, you, look, you can look at that story and think, well, this is just a, a nice little fable. Uh, you know, maybe I'll watch it on Walt Disney. But <laughs> if you think about it as a story, that was told to Celtic warrior kings to help them understand how to go through these different phases and stages of leadership, then it takes on a different light because one of the first things it's saying that if your you know, resilience needs to come to the fore, the first thing you have to do is you have to recognize when a sword is broken. Now, that's a, that's a difficult call to make because, you know, it's difficult to know when do I just need to be tenacious here? Yeah. When do I need to keep going? When do I need to, you know, you know, keep at it, you know, keep going, work hard, be dogged versus this sword is broken. And either my behavior or our processes or something needs to be absolutely abandoned. Hmm. Then if you're wise enough to be able to do that, the next thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to find the center, go to the center of the lake or symbolically, uh, you know, the center of yourself. And if you can do that, what you'll get is a sword and a scabbard. The yeah. sword representing the, the, the traditionally masculine or the analytical aspect of thinking and the uh, scabbard, the traditionally deep feminine or, or the, or the uh, imaginative, um, uh, intuitive aspect of thinking. And so the story is saying, saying that this, it's the imaginative, intuitive part that's worth 10 of the sword. In other mm -hmm. words, you can't analyze your way out of a situation that requires resilience. Hmm. You have to use your imaginative, intuitive sense. And to get there, you have to get to the center of the lake. You can't do it on a drive home. You can't do it in a, over a three-minute coffee break at Starbucks. So you, know, you, have to be, you have to be intentional about it. And so how – let's explore that for a minute. So how do you – how do we know, to your point, when, when it's – um, resilience or persistence that's called for. So I know, you know, I don't expect an answer here, but let's think for a minute about how do we, how do we make that distinction? 
Well, I think the way I would respond to that is to say to you this, it's the question that makes the difference, Mm -hmm. not necessarily the canned answer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to be able to ask yourself the question. You have to know when to ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, You know, how to do it, I think the answer is going to be different for all of us. Yeah. But uh, the key is having the wisdom to ask the question. See, I think that's the difference between, you know, an ancient perspective and a modern perspective. Mm-hmm. A modern perspective is that we're looking for the knowledge. We're looking for the answer. We're looking for the, whereas in the ancient world, it's about wisdom. And I, and I think um, oftentimes it was having the wisdom to ask yourself the question. Yeah. Hmm. So, so. The first question then is, how do we, you know, do we, what's called for here? Do we, is, is what's called for just, you know, continuing? Yeah, it's a bit of a struggle, but we know we're on the right path. So let's keep going. Or is what's called for here actually to abandon this path altogether? So that's the first question. Absolutely. So, I mean, in terms of a, you know, in terms of a, what should you do? Well, you know what, you'd be wise to schedule, to give yourself three minutes to just literally sit back, you know, put your computer on mute, put your cell phone on mute, sit back for three minutes and ask yourself the question. Yeah. Do I need to be resilient or do I need to be persistent? If it's persistent, keep on keeping on and do what you do, whatever you need to do to solve your challenges. Yeah. If it's resilience that's required, you need to get back to your real sense of purpose Right. And if you get that sense of purpose, you'll get your passion back. And it's going to mean abandoning your sword, it's got a broken sword, and it's going to mean or you know, putting your ladder up a different wall. And you know what? That's a big risk to be able to acknowledge that and look that in the face. Yeah. So right out, just take the time, step back, and do some deep thinking. You know, the quality of your leadership is the quality of your thinking. Hmm. And this is nowhere more true, in my opinion and the difference between resilience and persistence. So the first thing, take that three minutes, ask yourself that question. The second thing is, if, if it is resilience that's required, then you have to ask yourself this question, twofold. First of all, what does it take for me to abandon a broken sword? Mm-hmm. What's it take for me to abandon a broken sword? Second question, what does it take for me to get to the center of the lake so that I can reconnect or, or, you know, rebound in a way that gets me back on purpose. And the center of the, getting to the center of the lake is going to be different for all of us. And so as opposed to giving people a prescription for, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. My, my suggestion here would be learn to ask the questions. Yeah. Be wise enough to ask the questions. I really like that, Kent. So for all of you who are watching, I would love if you would take to the uh, the comments section and give us your views on those questions and tell us how you would answer them. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, your comments. And Kent, just before we close, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Kent at KentOsborne.com. That's Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. And thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. As always, an uncommon perspective. Loved it. Thanks so much, Kent. Talk to you soon.